Welcome. Tonight is the longest night of the year. For those whom nighttime is, uh, means heightened loneliness or fear, this is the night most dreaded. The night when hope is most needed. Normally, at this time of year, we're surrounded by the sights and sounds of joy, family gatherings, parties, and laughter. And while such gatherings have begun to take place again, still many are understated, and some are not happening at all. We all seem to have become a little pickier about the places that we go and, and with whom we gather and whether, whether we go to these large gatherings at all. Some of us, because of those changes, have also found ourselves left out. Many of us are reminded by the very nature of the Christmas season of those who are absent from our family circles. I'm thinking particularly of those who've died, whether recently or some time ago, but I'm also thinking of those who are separated from us because of various circumstances, not least of all the, the wave of illness that we are all facing this year. Others of us are burdened by disappointment or anxiety. Some of those, uh, some of us are acutely aware of the chaos in the world. And so, we've come together in this evening seeking comfort and strength from God. Would you join me in a prayer? God of abundant mercy, you have given us grace to pray with one heart and with one voice, even though our hearts are broken and our voices tremble with grief and sorrow. Comfort, comfort, Lord, your holy people. Comfort those of us who sit in darkness, mourning neath our sorrow's load. Speak to us of the peace that awaits us, the balm of healing for our weary and wounded souls. We ask all of this, trusting in the promise you have made to hear our prayers of two or three who are gathered in the name of your holy child, Jesus. Amen. So we're going to take an opportunity uh, to, to sing a hymn, a, a hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, is going to come up on your screen. There are words if you would like to sing along, and if not, you're welcome to just enjoy the music. So let's hear, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. From on high, 
and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge show, and cause us in the Let's take an opportunity now and turn to Scripture. I'm going to read from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Tonight we're going to take an opportunity to light the Advent wreath. We're going to light all of the candles, including the Christ candle. And as we light those, there's a, there's a liturgy that you can follow along if you'd like. I'm, I'm going to read out the words of the leader. Then I'll pause, and I'll also read out the words that are marked people. If you would like to participate from home, that would be lovely, and you can read along with the people section. We light the candle of hope as we await the coming of Jesus, who is our source of hope. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of hope in our times of emptiness. We light the candle. We light the candle of peace knowing that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of peace in our times of uncertainty. We light the candle of joy knowing that our comfort and help comes from God. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of joy in our times of sadness. We light the candle of love, 
knowing that God is love revealed to us in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of love in our times of loneliness. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and lived among us full of grace and truth. In Him was life, and that life was, f- was the light of all. The li- uh, we light the Christ candle, knowing that Jesus is our hope, our peace, our joy, and the source of love. I'm going to turn to another passage of Scripture found in uh, sections of Isaiah. Isaiah 41 to 5 and then 28 to 31. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground shall become leveled, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow to- uh, grow grow tired and weary, and young men stoop and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. So this year, this is the third Christmas season, or Advent season, where, where COVID has loomed large. And to add insult to injury, uh, we are also seeing huge surges in flu and other illnesses. If you have a, a kid in school at all, you know exactly what I mean. Now, many of us had hoped that by now, this would be all behind us. Well, for many of us, 2022 has been a year where things have improved. They're still not normal. And at this point, I know that I have mostly lost the notion of going back to normal. Now, I don't want to exaggerate the point too much. After all, the sun still rose and set. The world continued to turn. Children still laughed. Babies entered the world loved by their parents. People fell in love. There have been joys experienced by many without question. But still... For many of us, perhaps most of us, everything that the last two years had brought, we had really hoped that 2022 would not just be good, not just be better, but would be great. And for a lot of us, maybe all of us, the hopes of the year didn't really come true. And that it's felt so very unfair. But this is far from the only time where I know I felt like the situation around me was unfair or or wrong in some sense. You know, there have been times where I've stood at a graveside or in a hospital room or even sat in my own kitchen table feeling the weight of somebody's absence. And I've thought to myself, This isn't right. Now, at first blush, that thought seems almost absurd. I have known for all of my life 
that people will experience deep sickness, that all people die, and not all of them do so at a ripe old age. I have known my entire life that relationships can and do fail. And yet, there have been more times than I can, be re- than I can remember where I've been filled with this sense that this just isn't right. Relationships shouldn't fail. People shouldn't get sick. And the light in our loved one's eyes shouldn't fade away. I think the story uh, God reveals in the Bible ultimately shows me that those feelings are rooted in our, in our beginnings, in, in God's initial plan. When God created humanity, he designed us to live in a world that didn't know sickness, that didn't know brokenness, that didn't know death. We weren't designed for those things. We were designed for better. But we live in a world filled with brokenness. We are filled with brokenness. The passages that we read today tell us a few important things. Perhaps the most important is that God has taken notice of our suffering. That he wants to help us through it in the short term and will deal with it in the long term. Our nativity scenes can be deceptive. They they appear idyllic and peaceful. But the first Christmas was neither. It was long journeys, nations and kings vying for power, startling appearances from heaven. It may not have been peaceful or idyllic, but what it was, was uh, was God's answer to some of our deepest questions. Does God see our suffering? Does he care? Will he do anything about it? The process of raising valleys and lowering mountains, of changing the world back to what it ought to be, is not a fast process, nor is it an easy one. But it was one, started in the manger, and it still continues today. I heard some time ago that all of the darkness in the whole world does not have the power to extinguish even one single light. I like that thought. Because there are days where the world feels just so dark. And the truth facing us in this coming season may be the continuation of a long, dark period. As we face darkness, we will need to respond with light with kindness, with patience, with forgiveness, with compassion, with love. The light that we can bring into the world is not dependent on us. Christ is the light shining in the darkness for all to see. And the darkness will not overcome him. And through him, we have the light of life. Some of you may have noticed that we had another candle here, a a sixth candle, one not part of our Advent wreath. This candle is one to light in a sense of a hope, a realization of God's presence with us. If you have a candle at home, you can light one yourself. Maybe you're lighting it as a prayer, a sign of hope. Maybe you are lighting it as a form of remembrance of somebody. But remember, it's better to light a candle than curse the darkness. And we're going to light this candle, then we're going to have a time of silence, and then we're going to transition to singing Silent Night. Please join us as we sing Silent Night.
like before, the music will come up, there'll be lyrics on the screen that you can sing along with. Thank you so much to the worship team for recording that song. What a beautiful song. Thank you so much for participating in our longest night of the year digital service. I want to wish you all of the hope, joy, peace, and love as we continue to work our way through this uh, Advent season. Let me offer you a benediction. <clears throat> then Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Go in peace with the light of Christ in your life.